Hello. In this video, we are going to introduce pivot tables. So if you've heard of these and are wondering what they're about or how they can help you uh, make your life better, here, uh, here's a little introduction that might help you. So here we've got a table with some fairly simple, fairly basic sales data. Uh, we've got salesperson's name, region they work in, account the sale was made on behalf of, I guess, so the customer is, um, the order amount in the month. And it's a pretty small data set, but we've kept it that way so that uh, the workings of the pivot table will remain, you know, transparent so you can kind of see what's going on. But uh, when you uh, see it in action, I think you'll realize that with much larger data sets, uh, pivot tables are incredibly useful and and powerful in terms of the number of different ways they let you see what's going on with your data. So what are some typical questions that you know a sales manager might want to ask about this data set? Well, who's my biggest selling salesperson? Who sells the most? Where do the most sales take place? When do those sales take place? What month? Um, and how much took place in the East, the West, how much took place in January, how much did Michael sell, how much did Melissa sell, and so on. Um, pivot tables make it very easy to view the same set of data in very, very flexible ways, as we'll see. And unpacking that power is as easy as this. So we just need to start with data set like this with headings and arranged and you know, you'll notice that this is formatted as uh, an Excel table but it's not necessary to do that if uh, this was just a table with headers that would work fine it doesn't have to be uh, you know have the sort functions enabled or anything like that or or be a uh, an actual Excel table um, but just for uh, illustration purposes, that's, uh, that's how we've cooked it up. So click anywhere in or near the sheet. Excel's pretty smart. I'll show, you, I'll show you what I mean. If we go to the Insert Ribbon tab, hit Pivot Table, um, a dialog box will come up. Now I notice I clicked outside the table, and nothing has come up under this table or range uh, for where it's queuing me to select the table range of data that I want to analyze. So I'm just going to cancel, click within the table, and hit the pivot table button again. Now, because it's an identified Excel table, it's got a name in Excel, it doesn't necessarily, as I say, have to, but it is picking up, as you can see by the sort of marquee line around the, around the table, it's figured out where uh, where the data is. Um, if I had to pick it manually, I could just use my little data picker here, click out of the dialog box, manually select the table, or the range of data rather that I, that I want to use, happens to be a table in this case, bounce back into my dialog box, and on I go. Um, I can use external data sources as well, but for the purposes of this example, we're just going to stick with stuff that's in our workbook. Now, where do I want to place this pivot table? It's my next decision. I can pop it on a new worksheet, but just so I can work back and forth between the data set and the pivot table, so you can see the mechanics a little bit easier, I'm going to pick the existing worksheet. I'm just going to stick it right next to my table. Now, if I'm working with a big data set and, you know, I want to sort of go nuts building my pivot table, I, I would probably stick it in a in another worksheet so I've got more more room to move around. But as I say for this we'll we'll keep it uh, keep it tidy. So I'll click back into my dialog box. Um, in subsequent videos we'll talk about data modeling and some of the powerful tools that Excel has for data analysis, but for now, we've got 
arrange the cells. We've got a location to place our pivot table. That's all we need. Click OK. And now, now we've got a couple of items on here that we didn't have before. So this space here is where our pivot table is actually going to appear. This little dockable tool over here is our pivot table field list or field selector. And this is what lets us see the pivot part of pivot table. So what it lets us do is it lets us choose the dimensions, if you will, by which we want to see the data. Let's suppose that I want to see the sales order amount totaled by salesperson. And in my pivot table to start out with, I want the rows on the side of the table to contain the name of the salesperson and the values summed up in the table to be the sum of the order amount. Pretty straightforward question. I want to know how much each salesperson sold. So all I do is I go up into my field list, left click, or I could tick here, um, or I could click and drag, same, same. Um, what happens when I click is that Excel guesses that I probably want to see that kind of information by row. It's, it's pretty embarrassingly clever, really. Um, suppose I was a little bit strange and wanted to see that by column, I could just drag the salesperson name over to the column area, but much more usual to probably see it by, by row. So what I now want to add to this is the sum of the order amounts. So I'm going to drag order amount under values and notice that it's come up with sum of order. It intelligently guessed that that was just how I wanted to see this information. And lo and behold, it's returned the orders summed by salesperson. So there's all Kathy's, there's all Michael's. So I can instantly see where my largest, who my, who my uh, largest selling salespeople are. If instead I wanted to see the largest selling region or what the sales were by region, first of all, region can go in the row area. So we're starting to get the idea of how data can be pivoted around to be looked at from different perspectives. How about salesperson in the row and region in the column? So this not only gives me a total and subtotal for the salesperson across each region, but gives me totals by region as well. All right, so if I, one way of filtering on say my salesperson is to manually filter using the pull down here. If I want to filter by another field, I can drag it to the filter area here. Say I want to look at account or maybe maybe month would be better. So let's just take a look at January sales. And there we have the January sales. Select multiple items. I can look at January, February. Look at all again. And as I say, um, pivoting, very easy. If I want another another perspective on my data, it's as easy as pulling the pulling the fields around to rearrange them. Um, and again, with a 
fairly simple data set like this, we probably could tell a lot of the stuff by, you know, by inspection or at least by subtotaling and sorting and stuff. But you can imagine with um, a data set of tens of thousands of rows, that this would be a very, very powerful means of getting information out. Um, in another video, we're going to look at some more filtering and analysis techniques. But for now, that is a basic introduction to pivot tables. Hope you found it useful. Thanks.